We're going to be here hanging out, talking all about how the world of 3D printing is changing around us. Let's just make sure that we are live. Looks like that we are. That's wonderful. Joined here by some awesome people. Thank you all for showing up a little bit early, leaving a like, subscribing, and all those fun things. We got Mad Cat is here. Richard Burl is here. Max H is here. Jose is here. FJ Prince is here. Thomas. Who else we got? Zerno. I see the resident troll is here as well. Mr. Nomad's Galaxy. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. Uh, we're going to... Gosh, cat. Come on. Oh, man. It's been a while since you've decided that you wanted to be on camera, but we're glad that you're here. Yes, Victoria is still around. She's doing wonderful. She's just she's just been camera shy lately. She's been camera shy. <laughs> now there's a cat. Well, wait, now that's just mean. Uh I asked last night, no cat. Hey man, look. All right. She uh to be fair, she did come around later on when we were streaming with Pez Liz last night. So I technically blame and look, she just ran off. She just ran off. You scared her off. Anyways, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about kind of the the changing the changing ecosystem within 3D printing, right? If you've been in printing for more than let's go with 2 years, right? Within 2 years, you've likely seen the shift in what's occurring in the industry right now. We are seeing so many more machines that are designed more like appliances and a lot less like the work that we were used to from yesteryear. Um, and, well, that's kind of a good thing, right? Yes, there will always be the old man yelling at the clouds inside of me that really wants people to build their first 3D printer, to understand it, so that we don't get the same kind of BS questions all the time. But I think that also has a lot to do with the education that's out there, or more specifically, the lack there of it. We want to make sure that the education is good and right. And unfortunately, a lot of the terminology, right? Like your PA. Well, is that, you know, like a loudspeaker system or is that pressure advance? I, I don't know. And as, as a newbie, you may not know what to search for. And so if we get a good system out there of you know, education, maybe, just maybe we can solve some of these growing pains that are associated with it, right? Bamboo, to me, is probably the closest to a uh, appliance that we have with 3D printers, right? Where they're really complicated to work on yourself, right? Just go and try to change a belt idler. It's about a four-hour process last I checked and is not officially supported by the company. But... When they work, they just work. And that's how you expect your appliances. You expect your microwave to just work. You expect your oven to just work. You expect your cooktop to just work. No matter what fuel it uses, electric, gas, whatever, you expect it to just work. And you're willing to pay a premium for those extra services. However... There's a baseline that you're not going to go under unless it's used or it's old. And yeah, welcome to the world of new age 3D printing where it's a commodity and you're going to be paying a little bit more money for it. Now, we're noticing some of the big key factors in commodities, right? And so um, because understanding what a commodity is is well outside of my knowledge base i asked the obvious expert on the internet chat gpt and it says uh interchangeability price competition market perception lack of differentiation high transparency and availability of information and global trade and outside of number five which is the high transparency and availability of information yep that's what a bamboo is it is everything else and everyone that is trying to compete with it is doing the exact same thing bamboo is not transparent and they do not have a high availability of information you might suggest that they do with their wiki last i checked it's still in progress um so 
I, I don't know. Maybe that's in progress like, um, oh, Factorio was in progress for like 10 years. I, 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 I don't know, man. But the X1 is what everybody is looking to copy, right? Every single company that makes clone printers has brought out a clone of a bamboo printer. And uh, that says something because that means we've got our interchangeability. We're playing down to pricing. And the market perception defined as when consumers and businesses start to perceive products as equivalents, regardless of the brand, the decision are based primarily on price. The product is seen as a commodity and yep. Yeah, I mean, we've seen that for a while now, right? That a lot of the first-time buyers are very much price-driven. And that's why, like, what we call the Poverty P1P, the Flashforge AD5M, exists. It's a $300 P1P. It's just 220XYZ, right? And they did that likely because they already had the heat beds, they already had the heat plates, they already had a lot of the parts that they needed to build this machine. And so they did. You know, we have lack of differentiation. Yeah, all the freaking printers are even starting to look the same. I'm looking at you, Creality. Like, the K2, which you all should have really done your research on the naming scheme, because that's like a relatively dangerous synthetic drug here in the States. At least that's one of its names. Um, looks like pretty much dead on to a bamboo X1 carbon. And when you look at where these machines are sold, right? They're sold globally, but specifically in the United States, Micro Center retails both brands. So if I can have a machine that looks just like my competitors, but is less than their price, I will statistically at least, get more sales. Because why would someone want to upgrade to this expensive machine when they could buy mine that perceptibly looks the same? That is where we start to play in commodity. And yep, sorry, Creality, you guys are absolutely guilty of this. And I, I feel like you've never hidden it, so it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. But there are people like, oh my God, it's a clone. I'm like, I don't know what you expected. That's literally what they built their business model on. And that's fine. Creality is an economies of scale business that they want to sell lots of 3D printers, but for very, very, very low pricing. And it works for them, right? But you have to understand if you're a first timer and haven't done that research and don't know those things, you're going to be very price dependent. And unless you've gone online and seen reviews for the machines, you're flying blind and you're trusting an associate, which might be knowledgeable, might not be knowledgeable. Thankfully, though, you've got a return policy. So if you don't like it, you can always bring it back. But 3D printing is becoming that commodity. And part of me hates it. Part of me likes it because, well, the service bureau is dying, right? The average service bureau, like what 3D musketeers used to be, is dying. Because as 3D printers get easier to use, well, what's the incentive to outsource it to somebody else anymore? And that's okay. We saw this coming a long time ago. We've actually been refining our business practice. So we work with the type of clients that we want. The type of clients that will, under no uncertain terms, ever bring 3D printing into their own house. They don't want to. They are okay with paying that extra money. They want to pay that extra money because they get the benefit of not dealing with the BS themselves. But those that want to sell to the general public, right? And I always use the example of the Flexi Dragons, because they're they're still, they're still really, 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 uh, you know, a high sale item, and you see them all over. You are primarily playing at price points. And as a business, I don't want to play price points. If that's what you want to do, by all means, have fun. I don't want to play price points. It's not worth the time, effort, and energy to try to compete with people that are willing to do it for less when instead we could provide a high value to our clients. Not many people out there are printing in the materials that we're printing. And yes, we, we print PLA, PETG, and all that, but I'm printing some fire retardant PC ABS right now. There aren't a lot of people out there that are willing to print that stuff, and uh, we're happy to do it. It works great. We have a process and protocol to do it. 
That's what we love about this industry. We found our clientele. But if you haven't yet, you're likely noticing that you're having to keep cutting your price because more people are popping up in your area with like one or two printers that think they can play. Maybe they can, maybe they can't. Only time will tell. But we see a, a, a continuation here, right? And I think it was Dennis from Thangs um, that first talked about it with me, that it was Anchor. As soon as Anchor came into the 3D printing industry, he marks that as the, the standpoint of it becoming a commodity. Because Anchor doesn't get into the business of anything unless they know they can make money. Now, for those that don't remember the Anchor Make printers, we will at some point be looking at an Anchor Make M5C. They sent us one. I honestly don't know. I, I My intention is just to immediately give that to my girlfriend's brother who's wanted a 3D printer for a while because it doesn't have a screen. So it's very, very seldomly useful here in this shop. But Anchor, Anchor's a brand that makes a little bit of everything, right? They've got the Eufy brand. They, they, they've got a few others. But Anchor is most known for making cell phone chargers and cables, right? Anchor, unfortunately... To them, I guess. I, I don't really think it affected the end user all that much. But unfortunately for Anchor, they decided to run a Kickstarter basically at exactly the same time Bamboo did. And yeah, it, it, it didn't catch on the same way that Bamboo did. We have, an, we have an Anchor Make M5 and we have a boxed M5C right now. I will say I like the M5, but it's it, it's an ender right? It's it's a clipperized ender with a really nice case around it. It's got V wheels. It's a bed slinger. It's really loud. And while yes, the camera has, you know, it's got that vision crap, the screen moves with the Z axis, which is kind of weird, but otherwise there's not a lot of things that are different about this machine. I'm excited to see what they could come up with next, but my guess is it's likely going to be some sort of a clone core xy if you will right and we've even started to see companies cloning off the popular core xy kit builds i'm looking at trundon cyborg and now sovel with the sv08 that is going directly after the voron 2.4 and there's been some controversy around that it looks like sovel's trying to clear that up regarding uh donations back to the voron project and, and i'm happy to see that kind of thing right? That they're going to be contributing back to the product they basically more or less stole, but didn't do an amazing job of it from what we can see. Uh, uh, by the way, there's going to be a whole video running down the new machines that have come out this year. Uh, stay tuned for that. If you do want to contribute to that video, both opinions and machines to be in this list that we go through, you can support us on Patreon, PayPal, YouTube channel members at the $10 tier or higher that get you access to our private Discord server where we discuss video topics and things like that. If you are in that Discord, you already have access to see that um, that thread and you will also know when that video is coming out because it already has a release date. We've already started filming it. Um, so that is something that, you know, if you want to be able to participate in the videos before they go live, that's a great way to do it. And hey, like the video, subscribe if you haven't. Helps the channel grow. Those cost you nothing, and it is appreciative of it. I guess if you are listening back audio only, you're a week behind. You missed it all live. Sorry. Um, and for reference, there will be no podcast next week. So we're going to be at the Rocky Mountain Rep Rep Festival. We will not be doing a podcast next week. Uh, we normally take those weeks off so that we can focus on making sure that we're filming. Uh, but we might be streaming. I don't know. We're still kind of working on that idea because we will actually be on a panel at that time. Uh, although I guess it'll be 10 a.m. here. But we'll be on a panel. And if if we can, we're going to be streaming it. So that should be interesting. Anyways. Um, Zerner said, not sure you can call it stealing when it's open source and the machine will be open source according to them. Well, it has to be open source because they're utilizing stuff from the Voron project. It becomes theft when they're not really playing. They're playing. I guess it's not technically theft, right? It's not technically theft. I would classify it as stealing, but not theft. And I know that those two are probably very similar to most people, but. I think they just don't get it 
right? They're like, oh, should we open source or close source it? You don't have a choice. It has to be open source, right? Oh, what size should we build it at? You already know the size you're going to build it at. It, it, that's all just BS marketing. I'm sorry, Sovol. I, we see right through it. And at least I do, right? Having people choose what size printer they want. You are always going to do the size that you had intended. That marketing thing that you put out has no bearing on the decisions of what your company is going to do. Same thing with open source versus closed source. It had no bearing. You were going to do it. Just why? It, it, it's marketing engagement, like Zerno says. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. I feel that when we see what this industry has come to, right? Companies will attempt to take things from others and only give open source or credit or anything like that when they're called out. And see, the problem with calling out companies is that they often act in poor ways when you call them out. Some of you might recognize what I'm trying to reference here. And that doesn't help the situation. You know, when you call out a company for doing something poorly, they should just be rectifying the situation. They had an opportunity. They chose not to do it. So you went public. That is what we're forced to do these days. And I do wish that we would see more 3D printing companies take that first step into making sure that these problems don't occur. But we often don't see that. That's unfortunate, but it is life. And there's really nothing that we can do about it. Um, and until we kind of set a standard and until there are some sort of like teeth put on to violating open source, other than needing to go to court and an attorney and then nobody wins. It's the attorneys that win. Um, this will likely be a cycle that continues. Nomad says, here's an example I can give about it being theft. Funser is making a positron kit. And it's claimed they are working with the Positron team and is sharing the revenue. They've never contacted us. Yeah, and see, what will happen is if you don't do your research and you don't check if a company is actually doing that, then you just assume they're doing the right thing. And they may not be. I don't like when that happens. Geek Toy Box says, it's like when Prusa put out their survey about what we wanted in the successor to the Mark III and then dropped the completed Mark IV a short while later. I feel like Prusa is one of the few that will continue to make small iterations, but we also have to remember that they might be looking at a successor to the Mark IV already or a different printer it could have been marketing. That one, I'm not certain. There are things that I can't talk about. And that's what I'm going to say. Zenar says, side thought. It seems that Nero indicated them shipping with Orca Slicer with a profile for the machine. Are they going to get away from Cura? It looks like they will. It, it does appear they're going to be getting away from Cura, which is good, right? I like Cura. I like Ultimaker. In fact, Ultimaker is going to be releasing new printers too, and I'm looking forward to that. But Orca Slicer is a better slicer right now. It is being updated more frequently. It is more community driven. And unfortunately, we're likely going to see the same BS that we see with Cura, where companies are going to ship outdated versions that are their own skins without anybody really understanding what the difference is. And the consumers that buy it won't realize they're playing on outdated software when all they have to do is just, you know, update it to the real one. And all these companies would have to do is just submit their printer into the, the software and it will just be there. And you don't have to worry about it anymore. So, I don't know. I don't want to see that same thing happen, but I know it will. I know it will. I know for a fact it's going to keep happening. Uh, yeah. Geek Toyback says, it was marketing. The printer was, lo was, was long since complete. And that's fair. It might have been. I don't remember when they put that out versus when they released the Mark IV. I, I have no idea. Uh, Let's Play Macho says, you mean like Flash Forward shipping with Orca 1.7? I guess so. Um, If it's skinned Orca that doesn't update normally, 
I've got a problem with that. If it's old Orca and it will just update to 2.0 or whatever the latest revision is, that's fine with me. I don't, I don't care about that. Um, that is just, oh, we, we did, we flashed all of our S, our, uh, our SD cards or USB flash drives all at once. So this is what they have on it, right? If it's going to automatically update to the latest version, hey, then that's, that is what it is. I don't like the skinning. I think that's just ridiculous. Companies are trying to put their names on things that doesn't necessarily need to be there, but whatever. <clears throat> Excuse me. We are also seeing a move away from kits, right? We're seeing very few manufacturers move toward the kit or even like the semi-assembled kit. I'd be curious to see, and I didn't watch Nero's stream of the build yet, but how difficult the SV08 will be to build versus a Voron, right? Obviously he did it in one stream, so it's clearly easier to build, but how much easier is it to build, right? I want... Like the bamboo really kind of started this. It comes out of the box. You remove a couple of screws. You're not putting anything in place other than like a heat bed. And you turn it on, you calibrate it, that it does all on its own, and it just works. And that is, that's kind of the experience that now. I set the standard of this is what we need. And while my experience was take printer out of box, load filament, printer fails, um, I know that the vast majority of them aren't like that. So, yeah. I, I look at this industry and say that this change is for the better, but we have to be careful as to how it's changing, where it's changing, and how fast, specifically, that it's changing. Commodity is fine. The commoditization of markets is normal. It is expected. This is the way that things go. However, if we don't have the ability to support all these new users, we will find that a lot of people get upset because they're not aware of what they need to do. And that's where... Companies seem to just be reliant either on communities or content creators. And that's not our jobs unless they're going to pay us, right? Companies are giving free printers to content creators. This has been a long known thing. We are required to talk about it when we get a printer for free. We must disclose that it came for free in exchange for the video. But then they're expecting us to also assist their their user base that have bought a machine maybe because of our video and that doesn't work we're not being paid for that and help filming a video for a 3d printer unless it's a very nice 3d printer is not generally worth it the amount of time that you have to put into filming that video is way more but there are laws about reviews and money and that kind of thing and it's why we don't do printer reviews so yeah like you have to remember that, I mean, even with PrintFix Friday, right? Hey, I saw you guys talking about this printer. I bought it because I really liked the way that you talked about it. You know, I'm having these issues. Why don't you go to the manufacturer? Like, I get it. I want to help you. But at the same time, the manufacturer should be the first person that people go to. But they're not because a lot of them don't provide good support. And so people have just kind of learned that if you're going to buy a printer under a certain price bracket... Just assume the manufacturer is not going to help you. And if you don't exactly know what you're talking about, and we've talked about this problem of the, the verbiage not being what it needs to be, and like the newbies don't know, and hell, even a lot of the veterans don't know some of the terms. Like I will often, often get pressure advance and like coasting mixed up because in my head they're roughly the same thing but they're very much not the same thing and it's because i'm still learning right and with companies not having good support people get bad experiences they return their commodity and then if they've got a bad experience with the community as well they never come back that's not what we want to see Nomad says, I don't have a big team, but I never expect content creators to pick up my slack for support. 
I don't know if it's like specifically said, but it seems to be like an unwritten rule that this is what happens, right? Because like when we talk about machines, right? We talked about the Sovel SV06, SV06 Plus being the poverty Prusas. We talk about the 85M being the poverty P1P. And they're good machines, but they're not perfect. And because of that, people will ask questions about them because we've talked about them. I don't know if they've asked the manufacturer first. I could understand why they would go to a content creator because they recognize they're more likely to get a response out of a singular individual than they are out of a big company. And certainly when you're working with a smaller creator, right? Like one that might stream pretty much every week to do a podcast about 3D printing, they're a lot more accessible than say the big the big dogs, right? And that's why I always tell people to support your smaller creators. It doesn't take much to help out in a significant way. And if you do watch smaller creators and you like them, contribute to what they do. It doesn't cost a ton of money. And that is worth so much to the smaller creators because, well, it helps us understand that what we do has value beyond a fraction of a penny in ad revenue per view. So 3D printing three years ago, two years ago, right? These were Prusa kits or they were Enders, right? Those were the, those were your options, right? You got Prusas, you either paid a ton of money to have it assembled, you paid slightly less money to do the kit and do the build yourself, or you went with like an Ender. And there were stuff in between, but it was a lot of noise, right? Bamboo came out, the community got quiet for a few months then the clones started flooding. It was, what, maybe five or six months. Then the clones started to flood the market, right? We saw Creality do it. We see Frozen now doing it. We see So... Uh, did Soable do anything? No, they didn't. Flashforge did. I'm trying to think of who else made Bamboo clones. Uh, a lot of companies did. And that... That's intentional. These companies bought the that machine, the bamboo. They reverse engineered whatever they wanted to. And then they decided that we can cut this much out of it, hit this price class, and know that we're going to make sales. I don't blame them for this. This is, this is what great value is. This is what Walmart does and their brand of great value. It's what they do. They take a high sailing competitor. They knock it off. They come in under budget for, for that high priced competitor and they become that affordable product and they know they can sell it because, well, Walmart's house brand is known to be very consistently mediocre. And if that's what you're going for and you have a budget and you cannot afford the name brand, well, you can afford almost name brand. And that's okay. That's what they're trying to do. But consumers don't always understand that. If they did, I think their buying habits might be a little bit different. What do you guys think? Geek Toybox says, we're over here at Maker Fair OC trying to get it intro to 3D printing classes off the ground. Hopefully this helps some people in the community as they get their first printers. I think that's awesome. I would love to see intro to 3D printing classes at all the major events. Specifically the Maker Fairs. Because the Maker Fairs attract people outside of 3D printing where the 3D printing events really don't. Now I will say... Like Rocky Mountain Rep Rap coming up next weekend, uh, the 19th and 20th, or no, the 20th and 21st. I uh, gotta check my calendar. 20th and 21st uh, of April is going to have a lot of people that have never seen 3D printing before come in through the doors. They're never going to see it, and they're gonna see it for the first time, and they're gonna be amazed. But they're gonna leave amazed, not really all that educated, unless they sit into the right. Uh, talks, okay? Those talks, I'll be on one with a few others. I know Ellie's going to be in it. Pez Liz is going to be in it. Joel Telling is going to be in it. And Akuma Mods, I believe, are all going to be in it on Sunday. And I hope that we can talk about 
3D printing in a meaningful way for new people. Because that, that's what I want. I want to talk about it in a meaningful way for new people. That's a big deal for me. And those classes are kind of that intro. And what allows you to understand if this is a real thing for you. Because, like, we all kind of understand how to work a microwave. And if microwaves only had two buttons, it would be the add 30 second button and the clear button. That's it. And you all know I'm I'm not lying here. How many of you will go through to actually type in, oh, I want this to go for, for, for three minutes instead of hitting the add 30 second button a bunch of times? Why? Because it's convenient. Um, I really want to... I, I really want to see more education here. We're working on it personally, like here at 3DM. But we can't be, you know, the only ones that do it, right? It has to be more than just us. And I hope that we see more companies stepping up to the plate for this one. Zerner says, what if we thought of lower price printers like what Sovel is releasing, especially the ones that are open source, more of an open source item that could be community supported instead? Well, I feel like Sovel would have to have an agreement with the community to do that, right? Volunteering the community to support something because it's cheap doesn't necessarily sound like a, you know, it, it, it doesn't sound like a fair trade for me, right? I shouldn't be pushed into volunteering to help out others just because I didn't want to spend a bunch of money, right? I will because it's what we do, right? We, we want to help others and we do our best to do it completely for free. But it's not a long-term sustainable thing. It's why we ask people to, you know, do all the CTAs that I just talked about a little bit ago. I don't want to put two call to actions too close to each other. That just seems bad. But that's where it's going to get annoying, right? And especially as communities grow, like I was very active in the 3D printing community in Reddit for years, but it eventually got so large that toxicity came in. And I said, I'm done with this. Same way that I was active in the Facebook groups. I'm not active in those anymore. In fact, I'm barely active in any of the communities for 3D printing other than the Discord servers. I'm active in the 3D scanning communities now because they're still small enough that there's not a lot of hate. There's not a lot of drama. It's just people trying to help others. But when you do get this influx of people, those that have already learned can sometimes be a little bit aggressive toward the people that haven't yet when they themselves should remember that when they first started, they likely ask the same question. I know that time can remove some of those memories, but I think it's always good for us to return to the roots and say, the new people are the ones that will help ensure that this industry continues to grow. If we just push them out because they don't know what they're doing, then this industry will stagnate. And the commodity drops away. Let's see. Mike from Neverlet Machines Win says, and a content creator is familiar to them and they trust them. Generally, North Americans do trust companies that sell them products for honest answers. Oh, do not trust the companies that sell them products for honest answers. And that's fair because like statistically, they, they, they don't. Like Boeing continues to say their planes are safe. And the whistleblower somehow randomly get, randomly dies. You can't tell me that that what nope nope just the 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 amount of people that just say yep that's what happens boy anyways <laughs> no thanks no thanks uh i'm glad to see that uh, uh dom's event oc maker fair uh, orange county maker fair out in california um is going to be doing these classes. I love to see that. And in fact, I should reach out to Maker Faire Orlando, see if we can put on a 3D printing for beginners class out there, because that would be super awesome. We would totally do that. Um, that would be awesome. And 
I because man, that would and it, it'd be really cool if you could get a company to sponsor it. It had a price, right? Or maybe there'd be two. One that had a price that came with a printer, right? And a company would sponsor the printers and you know make make the cost of the class really low. And then there could be one that's free. That's a very kind of generic. Let's just talk about it. You know, that's uh, that'd be cool. Realistic, I don't know, but it would be cool. Uh, Zero says, just think it, just think it's interesting that some people are fine pouring time, effort, and or money to something like the Voron project, but are unwilling to do any of that because of something was from a company. I agree, but I also don't agree. I agree that people should be more willing to put in effort, but at the same time, the companies are selling these machines as if they don't need the effort. And so if companies will say, hey, like, like the Trudons and the Cyborgs, right? They sell a almost complete Voron. Okay, almost complete means I still need to do work. So you're, you're understanding what you're getting yourself into versus something like an SV08, which is being sold effectively as a mostly assembled Voron. All you have to do is put some screws in and you're done. So it could be the marketing side of things. I don't know. That's an interesting one for sure. That's a thinker. That's a thinker. Honestly, that might be a great podcast topic. Zerno, toss that into the Making Awesome podcast uh, channel of the Discord. That might make... I, I will have to flush that one out a little bit, kind of let it marinate and see how I feel. But that would be a really, really good podcast topic, I think. Max H with the $10 have a little support on me. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it. Does It does help make these videos much easier to do, right? Much easier. I know I will never, well, at least for right now, at least in the foreseeable future, it is unlikely that I will ever see my regular hourly rate uh, by making YouTube videos, but it allows me to share my passion with others, and that's worth way more to me than money. So, um... Bill on Sound says, Ikea does as well. Save one penny on a screw. Multiply by the amount of screws that has been used and you can still make profit somewhere. Ikea is actually pretty cool on the screw side of things. If you lose your hardware, you can go to an Ikea and get the hardware from them and they will give it to you for free. The, the shelves that I have out on my standing set, those are the Ikea like floating shelves. They're old. They're, they're the old ones. Uh, the, I guess they're not the safe ones. These are the relatively dangerous ones. I'm not putting a bunch of weight on them, so I really don't care. But I had no idea where the hardware was for them. So I looked at it like to try to buy the replacement hardware. Ikea, if they have it in stock, will just give it to you. So when I was in the area, I went to Ikea. I showed them pictures. I found my old receipt, which they can do because I have an account with them. And they're like, yeah, here you go. I said, can I get a few extras? They're like, yeah, how many do you want? I said, I have five of these. I said, great. Here are six kits of hardware. That's amazing. And yeah, that's a loss for them, right? That's a loss leader. They're, they're not making any money on that. But it's the same way that Costco will sell you a chicken, a rotisserie chicken for $4.98. And the CEO will threaten to unalive anybody that changes the price of the hot dog. Because they recognize that these are what people come to their stores for, and they will often buy other things. Did I buy other things when I was in Ikea? I do not remember because it was a while ago. But chances are you might walk around and buy something else. And now all of a sudden, that loss leader turned into an extra sale that would have never happened otherwise. There's a design to this. And it's way deeper than a lot of us know because I'm not a marketing professional. And I know a lot of you aren't either. So Dom's Geek Toy Box says they're doing classes outside the event too. That is awesome. First group is Girl Scouts when we get back from Rocky Mountain Rep Rap. Dude, that is awesome. I would love to start doing stuff like that. That would be so cool to see occur outside of, of an event. Dude, like, heck yeah. I wonder if there are, like, 3D printing badges for, for those groups and we could do, like, a merit badge day for the Girl Scouts or for the Boy Scouts or whomever. That'd be cool. I'd be down for that. 
you know, inspire the youth. Like we've got a, uh, we got an event coming up with Kirkland Ranch, Kirkland Ranch. I don't know. Whatever. It's a high school, like three blocks away. They've got a hiring event to Tuesday, Tuesday, where companies get to go out, show off what they do and say, Hey, we're hiring this. I don't know if we're really looking at hiring high schoolers, but what I am looking at doing is inspiring high schoolers to, you know, really look beyond what they think they can do and look at what the future could hold for them. So we're going and I'm going to bring like $100,000 of equipment with me. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited. We can't film it because they're, they're kids, uh, but we will be talking about the fact that we have a YouTube channel and all that. So I'm excited for those things. It's like that, that those days when you're able to just like get the wow factor, like, whoa, this is cool. That kind of stuff is just freaking awesome. In my opinion, I love doing those things. So, um, I guess hi, like the three students from Kirkland Ranch that actually watch this channel. You all have commented on my videos before. I will see you on Tuesday. <laughs> Geek Talk says, another way to put it is, why don't we let Sovel cheap out on a legitimate business expense support when companies like Prusa included in their price? Well, I mean, look at the price variance between the two companies, right? It would be nice if we, like, we should stack rank companies. Um, one of the mods, put that in our Discord server, uh, uh, make a new video topic idea channel, and, like, stack rank companies customer support. I'm going to get a lot of crap for that video because I'm going to def I'm putting Prusa at the top. I've never had support as good as Prusa. Like, and I've had like industrial level 3D printers and the support that Prusa <laughs> provides is better than pretty much any of the industrial level support that we've ever had. Um, yeah, that would be a cool video where we stack rank that stuff. We'll see how the, uh, the new printer stack rank video performs and maybe we'll do it for the companies as well because it would be nice to know if you're gonna buy a printer from a company like Sovel, are you going to get support and you might you might but it's gonna be like two or three day wait via email maybe if you catch up at the right time it's like if you recognize that if you send emails during business hours in mainland china you're way more likely to get a response faster than if you just send an email in the middle of the day for you because it will hit the top of their inbox and they're likely looking at the top of the inbox going down. At least that's been my experience. So a grain of salt, that one grain of salt, that one. Mike says community support is a cheap, is a cheap out, not uh, taking no responsibility for the product that you sell. Kind of like Google does. They count on volunteers to do their support. Oof. Man, you're to crap. You're totally right. I didn't think about it that the that Google does it too. Damn, that that hits. That hits, and it's true. It it, it it's a cop out. It's a cheap out. It's it's understanding that they don't necessarily care if you have problems because there'll be people that will step in before they have to. Man. That's one that I haven't thought of that. That's, that's like blowing my mind actively right now as we're talking. Uh, gotta love it. But yeah, Voron was a very toxic community back in the day. I was banned from the Voron community for asking a question like two and a half or three years ago. The ban was lifted, but it's like, wow. Okay. Now they've gotten their act together. They've been called out enough times that they got their act together. Uh, and I'm glad because like I'm building my first Voron. I'm still not in the Voron discord. I will not join that discord until that machine is done. Because as you all know, if I have a problem with that Voron Trident, it is not my fault. We blame everything on Steve Builds, who will be streaming here in about 15 minutes. When we are done, we're going to raid into Steve's channel. If you do want to watch his stream as well, I have linked his most recent stream, which is going to be starting relatively soon in the description. Steve and I like to help each other out like that. So yeah, go support Steve Builds as soon as we're done here. So when we finish this stream, don't leave. I'm going to throw you into Steve's. We can, I don't know, claim a raid or something. Have a little bit of fun with him for a few seconds, and then we can let him get back to work. He's doing a TD1 and a black box from KB3D today. That'd be kind of cool. 
I'm looking forward to actually seeing what's in the black box. I had no idea about it, and I'm kind of interested to learn more. Um, Nomad says, I hope the Positrons community will develop into a self-supporting one similar to Voron, only because I know I won't have the bandwidth to personally help people, even though I really want to. I really want to be able to help, but I'm only one guy, so I can't help, say, a thousand people. I can expand the team, but I have to make sure I vet people before I do. It's an uphill battle. Yep. That is exactly the problem that new companies will face. It is how do you provide support when you're brand new. The Micronics guys, they're the ones doing the sub $3,000 SLS printer that should hit Kickstarter sometime June or July. They are going to find the same problem. I don't think that they're ready to support it. They're three people right now. And they're going to be doing all the production in-house from what they're telling me. They are planning to vertically integrate everything. And while I wish them the best, I am heavily worried that three people do not understand what it takes to scale, specifically when it comes to scaling your software and hardware support. It's what has always been a downside for Bamboo. If Bamboo could get 80% or 50% of what Prusa support has, I would be praising Bamboo a lot more than I currently do. I don't really praise them much at all because they've constantly lied to people. But, you know, at least they finally realized they were violating EU law with the A1 mini bed or the A1 bed replacement. And now they're making users go through the proper steps. That's good. But it's a little late. A lot of us knew they were doing that before they even announced that it was possible. So, anyways... I just, I want to see companies take support more seriously. I get that it's a loss leader for them. But the community really matters. And if you keep losing your sales because your machine has bad support and your community is toxic or just not mature enough, mature enough being in size or in, you know, mindset, then yeah, you're going to lose sales because of it. Will it be enough that it matters? I don't know. I don't know. But for Nomad, for Positron, and what I would recommend for Positron is it is a kit. It is possible to self-source it. It is an LDO kit with LDO docs. I would say that your best bet right now is to start making content for the most obvious problems that can go wrong with this machine now. I would have a just a recorded build of you building the machine. A top-down camera on a table with very little audio, or maybe it's just voiced over later on, but record building a machine one-for-one one speed so that someone can start and stop the video as they need. Right, do a video about the most common issues you're going to have with a Positron, and you'll know what these are because you've likely encountered them yourself. The Positron is not a printer designed for a first timer. You can genuinely assume that most people that are going to build a Positron are not first timers, and that means they're going to have a better understanding of how certain things work. But like a video on how the Positron works or why it's a printer that we want to exist. Those kind of things will help not only build a brand and a market for this machine, but will also serve as a starting point for people that want to build the machine. I'm happy to assist in that how we can. I don't necessarily know that I'm the perfect fit, but I'm happy to be the person that does it. Right? I'm I'm not an amazing kit builder, but damn it, I can try. And, you know, being able to have a video, and even if it's a couple of videos, that are building a 3D printer as you're building it yourself can be very valuable if there are steps in the process that you're missing. But part of that deal is going to be making sure that you accurately and properly mark chapters for where they are in the actual instruction manual so that if the instruction manual is missing something that isn't all that obvious i can look for it in the video by searching for that specific chapter that would be a great one so um hey anyway, mike says did i sell my beef with a certain company the answer is no uh we didn't um so 
that's always fun. But I'm letting it go because I'm the bigger person. I'm not going to do a hit piece video like they did. So I'll, I'll, I'll be the bigger person here. Um, Mike says, might be tough to do a group build within a couple hours during a show. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, and, and that's referencing the, the 3D printer at an event. Unless it's like a Sovol, right? Or an Ender or something like that, where it's only a couple of screws and they get to learn about it by looking at their own machine. Or maybe there are machines that a company donates for the event. People get to look at them, use them, experience them, and then they get donated to a local community. I don't know. There's got to be something that we could do that will get people more, like first-timers, more hands-on experience. I think that hands-on experience is, is a big deal. So, yeah. Ronnie says, I'm pondering. So will SV08 or wait and see what the Creality K2 will be? I think you need to wait for both of them. I, uh, I don't think that it is um, all that smart to jump on these machines as soon as they come out, especially from companies that have a history of, of not supporting their machines 100%. I'd be careful there. Astro Lemonade says, I did 3D modeling in university and it sucked because we couldn't visualize what we were building. I only fell in love with 3D after having my first 3D printer and printing stuff. You know, it's interesting. We we see that we, we work a lot with Ringling, Ringling College of Art and Design, not the circus, the college. And in fact, our video, one of our video editors and our current graphic artist are both from Ringling. Um, great, great, great people, by the way. Absolutely love them. And our former graphic artist was from Ringling as well. Love them both. Um, in fact, our former graphic artist from Ringling is responsible for this shirt, uh, which is awesome. And I, I find that we actually end up with graphic artists that are also cat lovers. And that's amazing. It means that the clothing and things that they produce and the, the marketing stuff that they do is just absolutely amazing. But once we're able to like print stuff for them and show them what it's like, maybe they didn't do that during school it is super cool to see how they light up and how they want to do this this different thing and this other thing and this other thing and man that, that's the most rewarding part of this industry is to be able to see someone get inspired and just go down this rabbit hole and then just make sure you're kind of pushing them in the right directions because those 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 holes can be deep and cavernous and you may never find your way out for a while which can be okay can be a bit of a concern from time to time. <laughs> Motor Report Timing says, anybody heard rumors of a larger bamboo printer that are somewhat credible? There's rumors. That's all that I have. Obviously, you have come, if you are looking for, you know, insider information about bamboo, you have come to the wrong channel. I do not have that. I am persona non grata for bamboo. They do not like me. Uh, but ultimately, I don't blame myself for that. I blame them. They had options. They had they had choices. They chose violence. <laughs> well, metaphorically, at least. Sebastian says, anyone surprised or excited to see that the new Prusa firmware, including stealth mode for the Mark IV, it's almost so quiet that I'm working right next to it with input shaping on. Dude, with the XL and that new phase stepping... I have to like look back to make sure it's running every now and then. So I'm like, is it is it on? I I don't did it stop? What's going on? Nope, it's fine. Yeah. That's what I love about companies that will keep up their firmware and software development for years because it breathes life into machines. And like on the Mark 3s for an extra 250 bucks, I think is what the MK 3.5 is. You unlock so much more potential with that machine by adding a new board to it, upgrading some components. And like, I wish more companies would look at their machines as upgradable, but being a commodity means that it's not upgradable, that it is, it either works or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, you buy a new one. That is commodity, right? You don't. I, I say I was going to use you don't fix your washing machine, but I do. I fixed my washing machine. Most people will just buy a new washing machine instead of f 
fixing their current one. Now, companies have also made it more difficult, more difficult, and more difficult to fix washers, dryers, appliances because they don't want you to do it. They want you to buy it again, right? The adage of they don't make it like they used to is not just an adage. It's it's fact. They don't make it like they used to. It's kind of weird. But it is still possible. And yes, fixing my washer, it, it the uh, the bearing for the drum. So I, I have a regular, I don't have the front loading, I have a top loading washer. The bearing on it was failing. So it sounded like a screaming banshee when, when we were using it. You can get the parts. It's like $35 for the kit. I think $45 with the right tool. There's a specific tool that you needed. And you have to do it right. It took us about four hours to do it. And my washer is silent again. So you got that going for you. But it wasn't easy. It wasn't as easy as like two bolts. You pull it out. You use a bearing puller to pull the bearing. And then you put the new one in. No, it required me using a sledgehammer. I kid you not, it required a sledgehammer. It required hearing protection. But I'm glad I didn't have to spend $500 on a new washer. Did I spend more than $500 in time? Yes. Do I care? No, because I was able to fix it. <laughs> Let's see. Astro Lemonade says, how would you go about making tutorial for something that is not even... Sure to be shipped in the end of Q2. The communication seems to be lacking. That's something that needs to be addressed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you would have to either, one, work with companies and content creators ahead of time to get them advanced units. But I worry when companies do that, they're not sending finished products. They're sending like a beta unit. And that's not what I want. I want to see if you're going to be partnering with a content creator. I'm I'm live streaming, Steve. I'm I'm live streaming. Um, my buddy Steve is calling me. Uh, not Steve builds, different Steve. Um, but yeah, if um, if you partner with content creators to assist in this, one, pay them. Don't just give them free stuff pay them please but two make sure that what they're getting is a retail component and if that means you have to wait an extra couple of weeks to go full retail with your product then do it then do it because you'd much rather have something that you can push people to and say this is what you should be watching this is what you should be looking at that will be a much better move for you as a business and your short run work when it comes to dealing with issues with customers because that video can help solve a lot of those questions especially when it's a build like a positron but as for if you if you don't know when it's going to ship yeah yeah you can't you can't do that so f says good support will get you customers who use your stuff as a tool too not just the hobbyist amen to that no, my guys, as well, 3D Musketeers, you could certainly help us identify what is common problems, and then we can better identify what we need to find. Are, are you saying that I break things? I think he's saying that I break things. Ooh, that name I'm going to absolutely butcher. Uh, G Georgis? Novikovos? Sure. I'm sorry. I'm going to butcher your name, but welcome to the Discord. Thank you. Uh, you'll see the instructions on what to do when you join. Thank you. Oh, man. <laughs> but thank you for the sub. Greatly appreciated. But on sound says, I don't have faith that the Anycubic AMS is backwards compatible with the Cobra 2. I'm starting to hate it that new printers come out constantly, but can we slow down and just improve and build on this gen? Yeah, you know what? I'm here for that. I want to see more companies saying, I don't want you just to buy a new machine. I want you to upgrade it. Or, you know, be able to be able to have that upgrade path should you want it, right? The way that Prusa does it. The way that Prusa does it. Um, they say you can buy a new machine if you want, or you have an upgrade path. 
right? So you're not left behind with an older machine that doesn't work as well. I like that. But I get that with the cost of a Prusa, right? So Snapper Cap says, if you had $800, would you get a Mark IV Chidi or a K1? I wouldn't get a K1. Chidi, it depends. Mark IV's, Mark IV's Toyota Corolla, baby. They're reliable. They ain't going to die. They ain't the best at anything, but they ain't going to die. And that's an important factor when it comes to business. Um, but I can look at it from a hobbyist too and say, if I had $800, I'm probably not getting any of those. I'm getting two Flash Forge Adventurer AD5Ms, and I'm going to get a bunch of filament, some upgrade parts, some hardened hot ends. Um, that's probably what I would be doing right now. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't be spending all of my money on a, uh, on a singular printer. I would make sure that I have leftover. But I agree with Build on Sound here, right? The commodity market is the old machines are obsolete. But if Creality or any Cubic, I don't care who does it, that gets out this whatever AMS name you want to call it. We all know what it is. It's a clone of an AMS. Don't lie about it. It's simple. If that is something that can be Clipper, regular Clipper, and you can put it on something like a Voron, or a clipperized bed slinger. And now those machines have the opportunity for multicolor 3D printing or very wasteful multi material 3D printing. That would be ideal to me. I think they would sell a lot more product if they made their multi color handling systems open to bone stock clipper. The ERCF is not amazing. I know the next generation is coming out and that should solve a lot of the problems. But when you're dealing with multicolor, it is all about tip forming. It's why the MMU2 and the 2S were not always the most reliable. Why the MMU3 is, most, is, is much more reliable. Why the new firmware for the Bamboo, that beta firmware, has problems. Because the tips are getting stuck and you can't push them back down. They're expanding, they're getting stuck, and we're seeing people complain about jamming. Yeah, it's all about forming the tip. And just the tip, mind you. I just want to see something that's open that has that value because then you're going to sell a lot of that open product and not just sell it with the machine. It's rough. But I see where you're coming from. What else we got going on here? Uh, love our speed, our speed queen. I have no idea what you're talking about there. I have a speed queen set for a reason. Oh, I don't know what that is, but hey, cool stuff. Um, Mike from Out Machines says, having the top creators in their niche showing major issues is just bad press. Giga, yeah. Yeah, Elegoo's found out that it's really difficult to build a big printer and a lot. It, it, I am sure it is hurting Elegoo sales right now. Uh, the experiences that Joel has had, the ones that Uncle Jesse has had, and others, right? But I also don't think that the Orange Storm Giga is a 3D printer that a lot of people bought. I think it's a lot of, it's a printer that a lot of people thought they wanted, then they realized how big it is. For reference, Joel's like six foot five. Joel's like two meters. And that machine's huge. Ashley says, I think the best reviews come from people that buy their units from their own money. Everyone wants to make more out of their money. Free stuff plus minus money sometimes produces artificial reviews. Well, okay. This is this is where, as a content creator, I, I get to have a very, very different, different opinion. If I paid for every single thing that we showed on the channel, we wouldn't have a YouTube channel. It, it It's not possible, right? Like... Even, even some of our really well-performing videos haven't paid for the machines that are in those videos, right? Like I paid for my Purusha XL. I did as a three or four part build series building it. That has not even come close to covering the cost of that machine. And so not only am I out a bunch of my time being on camera, I'm out the cost of the machine. It is not a functional business model. 
if a company wants to have their machine shown on a YouTube channel, I think that they need to minimally provide the machine for free. If it's a review, they cannot provide money. I get that there's a monetary value associated with the machine, but any good content creator knows that unless it's a multi-thousand dollar machine, the cost of you making that review is much higher than the cost of the machine as it is. So, Frano Gazzola, probably got that wrong, says, you still have a bad experience with bamboo printers. What about K1 series? Have you ever tried? I We had a K1 come through the shop. It was very difficult to fix, but we got it fixed. And yes, um, the only reason I have a good experience right now with bamboo is because it's fully rooted. It's fully open. It's offline. I don't have to deal with them anymore. The only reason I'm having a good experience with it is because I am the warranty and I am the, and I, and I am now the one that's ultimately responsible for that machine moving. And it's great. Uh, let's see. God, we have a lot of comments. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm falling behind. Um, DD says we hit the smartphone phase of 3d printers. There aren't perfected yet for the average consumer, but some are into it. Eventually as they get easier and easier, they will become more appliance like yes. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like that first kind of instance with 3d printing and, uh, up oh, there's my washer. <laughs> um, it's like that first instance with cell phones, right? When they first came out where they were big, they worked, they kind of worked, they didn't work. It was a thing. And uh, that was the system that we used. Those that wanted to be the early adopters could be. We saw early adoption a long time ago. We're now moving up to like the first basic cell phone that the average consumer could buy. They have very limited functionality, but they're getting there. Bamboo is really the first iPhone in my opinion right uh let's see oh my gosh I hate the way that YouTube does the scrolling chat um I'm sorry I'm like trying to get to everybody's everybody's things here uh <laughs> Sebastian lawyer says thank you for saying niche and not niche I love you for it well I just said both so I guess I'm now mediocre in your mind Brandon says, I feel no upgrade path is a symptom from the race to the bottom for Ender 3 clones. Gotta make it as cheap as possible. Absolutely. Yeah. And because companies want that extra sale, the upgrade path doesn't necessarily make them a lot of money, right? So what does make them money is when you are buying a new machine. And even if that's relatively cheap... Even if that's relatively cheap, maybe they're making 20, 30 bucks on it. They're still making some value to it. Commodity is about replacements, right? The planned obsolescence. Love it or hate it, it's a fact. And while there are laws that state that it can't be within a certain time frame, companies are just building their products to last just too outside of that time frame. And they're making it difficult for users to be able to do the maintenance that they need on their own. Try to replace an X-axis in a bamboo and tell me that it was ever designed to ever be replaced. The answer is it wasn't. It was never designed to be replaced. But because of consumers wanting it, bamboo did it. And now it's like a four to five hour process for you to do it. Anyways, 92 watching, 39 likes. Like the video, please. And thank you. So... DD saying, is it possible? It is possible, but the community isn't big enough to support those sorts of ways. Odd doing things. That one doesn't make a ton of sense to me, but I'm sorry. Um, Ronnie says, damn it, my SVO6 eats filament. After initial filament feed, it snugs up between the gears and acts like freaking TPU. It's PLA. That sounds like heat creep. That sounds like heat creep. Check to make sure that your uh that your Actual heat sink isn't getting too hot on it because the heat sink is also the extruder. Uh, but you should be able to adjust your extruder tension as well on that machine. DD says, I think they should provide a coupon or something to purchase your own from a vendor of your choice so that it isn't filtered. That's an interesting one. That is an interesting one. 
Eric says, I would like to agree, but there's a serious track record of people being moderately successful by making reviews that say best printer ever. Yeah, you're not wrong. And that will come down to, that will come down to the integrity of the, uh, of the content creator, right? For every content creator that will follow the rules, there's at least 10 that will say, oh no, we'll, we'll take $500 to make a review for your product that's positive, even though it's a violation of federal law of uh, FTC. And that's a three-letter organization. We don't like those around here. Um, yeah, you have to look at it from an unbiased perspective. And that is very difficult when you got something for free. It's impossible when you got paid to look at it. And so that's why people are moving away from reviews. And instead, doing projects that involve those machines. And you're naturally going to talk about your experience with it. Like, I got the Q1 Pro for free. It looked like a decent machine when I first opened it. It wasn't a review. But I'm now dealing with issues where even now, with a brand new USB stick, it continues to just freeze. And I don't know why. Mike says, when I get a, a free machine, I usually have to pay import duties out of pocket when I receive it. Then I have to claim it as an income on my taxes. Then I have to invest many hours of my time. And that's why I like having a business. I can, the, the machinery is all tax deductible. Um, Eric says, and they won't say anything negative since they won't be provided with more free printers for their moderately small channel anymore. That's why we don't work with Snapmaker anymore. Because I said bad things about the A350T. It's why we will probably never work with Bamboo. And yet, I feel as though the company should actively try to look at not the haters, but the people that bring up good and valid points about what's wrong with their machines. Instead of just saying, middle fingers to you, we will never work with you again. But that's more of a issue with, with Western marketing and Eastern marketing than it is an issue with the business. I'm sure the R&D department would love to talk to people that have problems, but they don't get to that point. So, yeah. And I can see what Eric is saying, right? Especially with the first wave of Creality, et cetera. We saw a lot of creators making videos mostly to get free stuff. Yep. It's true. It's true. And there will be times where machines come across my desk and I'm like, I really like that machine. I would make a video with it. Wait, Grant, no, you can't do it for free. Um, But there are times like where we took the Flexi Spot sponsorship for the desk, right? Like, I did that because I wanted the desk because it would make my life a lot easier, right? I did exactly what they wanted. They wanted a they wanted a video showcasing the product. So I built the product live. They were not happy with that. They wanted a review, but they didn't ask for a review. So they didn't get a review. If they had asked for a review, they weren't going to get it. Because like it's a desk. I don't know. Use it or don't. It's a desk. Right? But yeah, I I I have to agree. I have to agree there that it will come down to the integrity of the creator, where the creator will have to decide what they're willing to do. It's the same way that I don't really like to go to events unless we get sponsored, right? We have a very small sponsorship for Rocky Mountain that doesn't even pay, doesn't even cover my hotel room. Um, Rocky Mountain Rep Rep Fest is sponsoring us to go, but it's not a ton. It's something, but... What this will end up being is that my out-of-pocket to go to the events like 2,000 out-of-pocket total. Then there's going to be all the time for filming. So there's two full days of my time. Plus editing. Plus, 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 plus. We're going to... A normal Rep Rep Fest has an overall cost for us of at least $3,500 to $4,000 in, in time effort, energy, everything. And if we remove my time, it probably comes down to about $3,000 of hard cost. Um, but that's okay. That's, we work that into what we're doing. It'd be nice if we could get sponsored, but it's why we will only choose to go to certain events during the year. But those sponsorships don't change the way that we talk about the content. It just makes it so it's more financially feasible for us to cover more content. I'm going to move on from this one. 
So Robert Jackiel says, initially a hobby, but for a lot of people becoming an appliance as well as a business opportunity. For me, it went to an appliance slash business about four years ago. Yeah, right? When 3D printers hit commodity status, they will become more popular within businesses. So we're going to see that average service bureau fall out. The ones that are just making parts for, who, for whomever has money falls to the wayside. And instead, they have to now either buy their own machines, figure out a different way to make money, or they're forced to shut their business, right? That's not a lot of fun, but that's the way it goes. And if you don't know that that cycle is what happens with most products, then you're doomed to fall victim to it, right? Astro Lemon says, you have totally valid points. Everything you said is true. I'm just tired of seeing creators, please big companies to continue to receive free stuff. Some companies just won't, just want only positive reviews. Yeah. Amen. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Zerna says, hey, printer companies obviously value when they can have a content when they can have a content created that is loyal and you can count on a positive review no matter what. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Loyal, loyal fans, if you will, are, uh, and loyal creators are a great way to maintain relationships. And yeah, there's part of me that wishes that I could act more prim and proper Right. You know, obviously calling out companies for behaving badly on social media is not always the best look. Right. And I did it just recently. Um, and I stand by everything that I said, how I said it and why I said it. I stand by it. But that will cause us to get less sponsorships. And I look at it and say, well, those are either from people that don't understand or those are from companies that all they want are the positive reviews and they're now realizing they're not going to get that from me. So Eric said, and then you showed how much a flexi spot did shake with the Magneto X at almost 1500 millimeters a second. That's fair. You know, what's funny, Eric, not like three days later, we got another email from flexi spot. They have a new desk that they want us to take a look at that uses four legs. And I'm like, well, I now know how to test it if we decide to go with it. I just, I don't, I don't have another space for another desk. So I'm not entirely certain if we're going to go with it. But I do like this first one. It's nice. It holds me and it didn't break from a Magneto X. I like it, but I don't have a need for another one. So, yeah. But yeah, ultimately... It comes down to the user to figure out what they like. And if you're going to rely on content creators for opinions, and a lot of people do, they rely on content creators for opinions. I recommend that just like you would when you're looking at reviews for cars, when you're going to buy a new car, you go to multiple places, you look at multiple reviews, you look at ones that are positive and you look at ones that are negative and you try to determine where are these negative issues coming from? Are they coming from something that is, you know, a valid concern? Is it something that you don't think is going to be a valid concern for you? And weigh your options, right? You don't want to just find the yes people. Like the, the, the traditional term would be a yes man, but that's not 2024 friendly. So the yes people of the world. You don't want to find just those. That's not how this works. You want to find people that are going to be on both sides. Nomad says companies not working with people that say bad things about their printers. LMAO. I say bad things about the Positron all the time, even though I really shouldn't. Well, you're saying it in a constructive manner because you're ultimately responsible for how things go. You're looking at your product as if it's not a golden goose. You're looking at it saying, well, we have to polish it. It needs some polishing before it can be perfect but I'm going to rely on a community to help with that. Brent says, why do you think filament has remained the same price even after scale of people buying it has increased so much? You think it would have gone down by now. You missed. You missed when it was expensive. Dude, filament back in the day was like 60 to 80 bucks a kilo and it was bad. Like 
you, you, if you had dimensional accuracy of half a millimeter on some of the old school stuff, you were pretty happy. When we got a zero and then a digit, I was amazed. And there were times where we were able to buy filament really cheap. Does anyone remember Excelvin? Remember anyone remember the brand Excelvin? Filament used to be very expensive. Then brands started pushing the price lower. Filament has been a commodity for a long time. 20 bucks a kilo is the 1995, right? The, the same thing that as seen on TV or Telebrands, that's an actual company, um, has done for years. That is a commodity price point. Filament is at a commodity price point. Yes, you will find stuff that is lower, but as we've shown in Printfix Friday, you risk quality issues when you start to look at really cheap. So, I don't know. Try it. <laughs> Geek Toy Box says to how much you get you to make your fair OC. We can talk. See, the trick is, I understand what my hard costs are, but I also like my friends. And if I'm friends with you, I'm willing to do a little bit more work for less money because I want to help and see you succeed. I want to help make that happen. The same way that when we were approached for a sponsorship for Rocky Mountain, they asked what I would take. And my response was, whatever you feel comfortable giving. Because I like the team at Rocky Mountain. We've interviewed them before and I will interview them again this year. I really like them. And if they have some cash and they want to kick it our way to help make their event better, damn it, I want to do it. But I also don't want to sit here on a high horse and say, well, I need 10 grand to come to your show. No. One, there's no chance. But two, that's not how this works. They are friends. They get a friends and family discount. There is a value at being friends with people that have a voice in a community. And that is, we are often willing to help our friends quite a bit. Let's see, what else have I missed? There are a couple of reviews that are trustful. The good ones are leaving this approach. Yeah. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Let me see. I'm 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 trying to scroll through to where I'm I'm looking at questions. Uh was it Sony that had an awkward physical add-on camera? I think. I think so, yeah. Yeah, some of the phones. Jerry, that is I'm fairly certain that is French. Um, says your thoughts on commodity material slash appliances equals bamboo ecosystem, industrial market slash machine equals Ultimaker ecosystem. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, man, yeah, kinda. Right now, I want to see what Ultimaker is coming out with. They they've been teasing a new machine. I want to see what it is. I want to see what they are releasing. I might be resin. It might not be. I'm not certain. I have no insider information on this. I should bother Matter Hacker to see if I can get some. But yeah, I think Bamboo set the standard for what a commodity 3D printer should look like. And a lot of companies are going toward it. They're missing out on the other things of commodity. Again, asking the obvious expert of the internet, ChatGPT, it is interchangeability, price competition, market reception, lack of differentiation, high transparency and availability of information, and global trade. And again, outside of number five, I think that Bamboo's hit a lot of it, right? Look at the differentiation between the P1P, the P1S, and the X1C. There's very little different between them. Right? There's a big motherboard shift between the P1 and the X1, but the machines effectively perform the same. You are losing out on the LiDAR, the screen, and a couple of other things from the X1 to go down to the P1, and the P1 is like half the price. A lot of people are willing to go with the P1, and it's a tiered ladder system, right? The A1 Mini to the A1. It's a very easy ladder jump to go from the mini to the A1. But then from the A1 to the P1P is not that much either. So it's a tier jump to go from there. And by the time you're done, you're at a P1S. Which I think is really where they're trying to push people, in my opinion. But yeah. 
yeah, I uh, I think bamboo is definitely the commodity and appliance where the industrial market slash machine is more of the ultimaker ecosystem. Although the Prusa Pro, I think, is going to be a venerable, venerable challenger for ultimaker and MakerBot now. Sebastian says, aren't I allowed to sell the hardware I don't need anymore after it's being reviewed? Diversify revenue streams. I don't actually know the answer to this question. My assumption has always been no. That is illegal for us to do it. But I'm not certain. I'm not a lawyer. I should bother my lawyer and ask him. Um, but I don't believe that we can. Traditionally, we just give everything away. We do what Joel Telling does. I will trade you. Bring me something to trade. I don't care what it is. I will trade you. And we have one of those coming up likely sometime in the summer here in Tampa. We're going to do an event like that where we just trade 3D printers for stuff. Uh, so we can kind of remove some of the older machines that are in our shop. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So that'll be a thing. And I like that. I would be nice if we could sell it, but the value of 3D printers on the secondhand market, the same way that the value of appliances on the secondhand market is so much lower than the new value that it even further, even further hurts my revenue streams. <laughs> And the effort to sell it is just a lot, right? You know, the amount of, hi, is this available that you're going to get is just going to be a pain. Didi says, scruples. Integrity isn't inherent to some. Love yours, for instance. I watch the videos from the shills in order to see the features. I watch the smaller guys for the honest opinions. Whoa, 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 wait. We don't show the features? Come on, man. Give us a break there. We do our best. All right. Us small creators, man, we got to we gotta try harder. It is easy for a big creator to make a decent video on something because their market is just functionally larger. But that is from the perspective of a smaller creator. YouTube has this weird thing where as you grow, you don't see where you were a year ago. Not easily. You see where you were... 30 days ago. And that line is still kind of the same. And it's always been the same. So, yeah. That one can be a bit challenging. Brandis has been looking for reviews on the new DJI drone. Yeah, I uh, can't help you there. PTG is ultra low cost. I use it almost exclusively. 8 to $12 a kilo is great. I'd love to know who. Love to know who you're buying from at that price point. Ashley says, video idea. Make a video where you get donations and a poll for which printer to buy. Buy printer and review it. Make giveaway. Give it back to one of the people that donated. I'm fairly certain that is illegal. Because um, at that point, it's not a fair contest. Um, we could look into that. If there's a lawyer that is listening that would like to help advise on that to make sure that we follow specifically the gambling laws. Gambling laws can be a real issue because that that is where you, you're basically saying that you have to put money into a pot to get the pot. And there's some gambling laws that are just really, really weird. And because they're different in every state and often counties have different gambling laws, that one is a very, very tough um Tough one, if you will. It's cool, but I'm not certain we can do it. Maca asked, have they tried California filament exclusively? A little more expensive, but the colors are chef's kiss. It looks like the same spools that Zealtech uses, for reference. So I don't know if California filament is actually making their own filament or if they're just reselling. Um, DD says, there are some really neat products that work for pellets. I would love, love, love 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 to look at pellet extruders i think pellet extruders are absolutely where we should be moving because a gaylord worth of pellets is very cheap compared to buying a gaylord of filament and dude pellets especially if you're doing big honking prints pellets are absolutely the way to go absolutely the way to go robert asked mentioning reviews do you know do you or do you know of any channel that does reviews on industrial printers, Ultimaker, Mingda, Formlabs, etc.? We would if those companies would want to do that kind of thing. Also, I do not find Mingda to be a uh, industrial printer, to be clear. Um, 
We can and have looked at industrial grade equipment on the channel before, including 3D scanners, but those are ones that I've bought. Um, I would love to look at more industrial grade machines. I know Joel has looked at it a little bit, but Joel doesn't do reviews and we don't do reviews either. But on these larger machines, I think that there is some value to be doing the reviews. And to look at those reviews from both a hobbyist perspective and a business perspective. And I would argue that out of most of the content creators out there, I have the most business experience in the 3D printing industry. I might not have the most business experience, period. But I've certainly been in the business of 3D printing since 20... 2012? Yeah, I think 2012. Um, and I think that that's relatively new for a lot of people. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I would love to. It'd be really awesome to do content for bigger companies. Um, I know Micronix, they're, they're doing that, that cheap SLS printer for like three grand, which is cheap for an SLS printer, to be very clear. They are looking at content creators. I applied. We are one-tenth the size that they were looking for. They were looking for over 400,000. So I helped them out by giving them some names of people that I think should get their machines. And I'm looking forward to it because one of them is a close personal friend. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Brandon says, mainly USA filament annoys me. Should be cheaper because it doesn't have to get shipped halfway across the world, but it's more expensive because it's made in the USA. Well, yeah, because your overall cost of labor is much higher here in the United States. It is very cheap to ship a container of filament. It's like five or $6,000 to ship a container, right? It's not very expensive. And you can fit a lot of filament into a 40-foot container. A lot of of filament i prefer to support made in america mainly because and specifically i'm supporting printed solid a lot we're going to be talking with polar 3d at um at rocky mountain but i want to support these american companies because i i like being able to work with smaller companies yes polymaker makes amazing filament but they're more expensive they're more expensive than printed solid I like Polymaker. I think they make beautiful colors. I've used their filament for a lot of things, but it is very expensive. Uh, in fact, actually, if I tilt this up, you'll see. Yep, it's right there. Oh, move your hand correctly. Right there. There's a few kilos of um, the Polylite PLA Pro, which we have a client that specifically requests Polylite PLA Pro. And we make it for him. I'm happy to do it. But yeah, it's not always more expensive to buy made in America. With that being said, it can be, but you also will get, in my opinion, better quality and consistency because you're not dealing with a massive economies of scale like you would for these larger companies. But Printed Solid is growing. We're going to be checking them out again at East Coast Rep Rapper 3D Printopia this year because they've expanded quite a bit. It'll be interesting if we can show you everything that we know. It'd be cool. Sebastian asked how hygroscopic PCCF is. I was under the impression it's roughly the same as PETG, but someone warned me it could be bad and need drying before every print. Just dry it. Polycarbonate, it's acrylic. It tends to uptake quite a bit of moisture. The CF doesn't really change that. Um, we will always print any high temp material directly out of a dryer. It's not worth it otherwise. Um... Let's see. The shills often have the product first. I just mean that as seeing the features, not that you don't show them. Got them. Yep. You're, you're right there. Yeah. Let's play Macho says, I know an audio YouTuber who will auction off his stuff each month to his subscribers via blind auctions. Is that Zeus? Is it Zeus Pantera? I love, he's a phenomenal reviewer for this kind of stuff. And, and the dude is like relatively, I, I don't want to say it's low effort, but it, it doesn't appear that he's putting in a ton of effort and he's got a system that just works. I'm certain that he puts in way more effort than I see. I know how much effort that we put in and I don't see it in the videos. Uh, but I love Zeus Pantera. If you're looking for audio stuff, I would highly recommend his opinion. 
on, on this stuff. I, I have I have often very much listened to his opinion and never been pushed in the wrong way. I don't know if we could do that with 3D printers just because they suck to ship. They suck to ship. Um, I don't know. It'd be cool, though. It would be cool. DD says, is the question of PET cost whomever is cheapest? Usually on sale. CC 3D through Amazon is my current favorite. Buying more than one at a time helps too. Well, okay. If it's on sale, I don't really know if that counts, right? And Daddy Wise says the California filament is made in China. Okay, so it's got to be the same company that Zealtech uses. The spools are the same. Uh, Sapper Cap says, I've gotten so tired of all the poor prints my Neptune 3 Plus has been giving me lately. Been overwhelming myself watching every review on all the printers in my price range. Really tough making a decision. When was the last time you replaced your PTFE tube for that machine? That could be it. Um, yeah, I, I get what you're saying, though. I do. I do. Um, it can be frustrating, right? That printer has been replaced with a four and the four is much more of a commodity, but bed slingers are tough these days. If you don't need the build volume, the 85 M is a phenomenal printer for the money and they're like 300 bucks. So, um, Tarzman says, clarify for Zeus, since you seem to be kind of far back in the comments, he does a yard sale. Yes, he does. He does the yard sale. I, I, I saw the tag from a, from a blue person. Uh, but yeah, like older printers can seem very tired and I don't know if the Neptune three plus has clipper. If it doesn't, you can put clipper on it and that could help. But yeah, if you're dealing with issues with the printer, you got to first solve that problem. And I get that. And there will be a lot of machines coming out. So keep an eye on it. We're going to be covering a lot of them coming soon. I'm not going to have them. I'm going to look at their marketing, determine how I feel about it, and we're going to rank them. It's going to be a thing. Hope it works out right. Robert says, from a business perspective, there are some viable choices. And when investing 10,000 plus into a machine, it would be nice to know the pros and cons in real use for sinking that cash into a product or ecosystem. I 100% agree. And I would be open to approaching that with those companies. And it's why we are actively hiring someone to do that kind of work for us. The reach out to companies, talk about what we do, why they should work with us. I am not the best person to do that. I, I feel very uncomfortable, you know, talking about myself like that. So we are actively hiring someone that has that expertise and experience or is willing to learn that experience to make those reach outs, obtain those sponsorships, get those printers and that kind of thing. So if that is a, a thing that you're looking to do and you think you do it, you can email me YouTube at 3dmusketeers.com. Make sure that the top of it, you know, like the, the title, something like, you know, sponsorship personnel or something like that. Brandon said, I looked at buying wholesale from print and solid, but couldn't get the price low enough to get enough profit from my 3d printing supply store. I don't know what to tell you there. Right. Um, I would say that it's a premium product and sells for a premium price. I would always worry about buying just the cheapest stuff that you can buy because that could lead to more problems. I will say there's a there's a Discord member who buys he just bought four four pallets of prushament and is getting a insane price. Like absolutely nutter butters insane price. And I'm, that's great. I'm glad they're able to buy that much filament. And it's like a couple of months worth of filament for them, if that. Uh, and they're able to negotiate really, really good deals. Um, if you are willing to buy in big bulk volume, companies are willing to offer you better pricing traditionally. So if you do have a 3D printing supply store, which are very few and far between, I will say, we tried it. We could not make enough money on selling like filament and parts and stuff like that to keep a retail store open. It did not make sense. Uh, and now that was also like 2017. So it was a little bit different time. Uh, but yeah, you'll be very, very price, um, very, very price dependent there. So fashion lawyer says, okay, so I need to buy a dryer. Yep. Yep. The polyphemus from Ibos is a no go. Been stuck in shipping next month for six months. Should I get an S2 and be done with it? I have an S2. I like the S2. I'm looking at the S4 right now. We are testing out a dryer for an unnamed company right now. 
you might want to hold off on buying a dryer is all I need to say. I can't, I'm under an embargo. I, I can't talk about it, but it is a very cool concept. One that I'm surprised nobody else has thought about. And um, if you are looking at buying a dryer right now and you don't need to buy one right now, I'd recommend waiting. I think my embargo lifts at the end of the month. Not actually 100% sure what my embargo lifts on it. But we've been using it. It works great. And I, I kind of like its, its style. I'm here for the style. Let's see. Um, oh, you had to replace the entire extruder head assembly under warranty. That's a rough one too, man. Um, yeah, Super Cap, Sapper Cap is asking, would I go the 85M or the Pro? I think I would go with the 5M. If you've been running an, o a, a, an open air bed slinger, the 5M, which doesn't have an enclosure, is just fine. I don't think the extra value of the... Uh, the enclosure is is there for the extra 200 bucks. Daddy Wise says, I printed over 100 kilos of, of PETG, probably 10 different manufacturers, and the only one I had issues with was Paramount Steampunk CF PETG. Nothing but strings even after drying. Yeah, CF PETG can be a, can be a bear to print. Um, and just that the commercial printer reviews is a tough one. Selling to businesses is different, is a different animal or approach. And yes, it is. And the dip, well, see, there's this weird line of, okay, for a small company to make profit on selling a con or giving a content creator a printer, for them to sell enough printers to make a profit, there, there needs to be like a hundred to 200 machines for that profit margin to make it. I'm taking a random guess for a company like Ultimaker to make a profit on giving you a machine and then you making a video on it. It's probably like five, six, seven. It, it's way, way less. Business class 3D printers are lower volume machines. They're not designed to sell millions of them. They're designed to sell hundreds or thousands. Selling millions would be a problem. They're not designed to be produced in that way. Business class devices are not economies of scale. They're not commodities, right? Take laundry, all right, your laundry, your 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 laundry, your washer at home, right? They're five hundred to a thousand dollars, right? Generally speaking, five hundred to a thousand dollars. You can get them for less. You can get them for more. Five hundred to a thousand dollars. They will have they will have more issues than an industrial grade one that's going to run you between eight thousand and twelve thousand dollars. But the average consumer isn't going to spend eight to twelve thousand dollars to buy a laundromat level equipment well if you are a content creator and sell a laundromat level equivalent device you need to sell less of those to pay off the value to the company of the free machine that was sent to you so that's where i look at this and it's a lower volume but it's a much higher value the thing is there's not a lot of business people that watch the YouTube videos. Yes, they might be business in their business, but they're normally watching the YouTube reviews for the home printers. And maybe they'll take some of that advice back to their day job or their own business and, you know, try to influence the decisions that are made there. But a lot of times that's beyond where the average business class buyer is looking for. And that's why we're starting written reviews because the average business class buyer won't watch videos. They tend to actually read articles. I don't know why, but it's a thing. Didi says, still surprised there aren't any dryers set up like a Tundra environment instead of cooking it. Alton Brown swears for it for jerky drying. Uh, you mean convection style drying. There are, there are convection style dryers out there. Um, both of them work. Convection is just better. Um, Zerner says, I feel like 3D printer supplies would best be paired with another business to diversify clientele. Yep. Yeah. You'd want to sell printers. You'd want to service printers. You'd want to provide service. You'd, you'd want to kind of be within that entire ecosystem. All your business does is just sell printer supplies. You might be struggling if it's brick and mortar, if it's online, you might be okay. I mean, look at, look at, uh, 
I guess Printed Solid does more than just that, too. Hmm. No, no. There are opportunities. There are opportunities. Uh, DD says, no, cold and constant air movement. Well, that is dew point problems. If you try to cool down stuff here, it's just going to condensate. So if I, if I cool down this room, everything starts to condensate. Currently it is 80 degrees Fahrenheit and 43% ambient humidity in my office. That is what my office is currently set at. It is 27 degrees Celsius outside or centigrade outside. I believe that is roughly the same, um, temperature. So it is much more humid outside than it is in here though. And as Tarzman says, your average business isn't turning to YouTube reviews. It explains why so many businesses make weird decisions on stuff like this. They're also looking at who is an approved vendor. If you're not an approved vendor, this can get very complicated very quickly. Businesses have, once you get above five grand and it goes above the traditional swipe purchases where it's, you know, more than a credit card purchase, the companies recognize that having a dedicated salesperson, dedicated support staff, having... All these different things like you can buy an Ultimaker and then you can buy a service package with it to ensure that it stays working, including up to full printer replacement packages. Um, we saw that with our uh, full color sandstone printers. Those machines are $70,000 brand new, about $86,000 fully loaded with materials. And uh, that there's two warranties for it. There's the parts only warranty and then there's the parts plus service. So parts only is $4,500 a year. Parts plus service is $9,000 a year. And the parts plus service is somebody else coming out to do the work for you. You can spend more money with the resellers and get higher tier parts plus service so that they come out faster. But if everybody spends that money, nobody gets that service in my opinion. We will traditionally just do parts only on our machines after the first year, because during that first year, I will be able to learn how to service the machines myself and can easily justify saving the $4,500. So that's from my perspective as a business owner. Sebastian says, I designed and built an industrial camera. I have a single client and sell them two to three units per year. I don't think asking unbox therapy to have a look at it would make sense. Nope, and would probably make your life a little bit difficult. Brennan says, I moved my X1C to my store and have been having adhesion problems. I cleaned off the plate, put some magic goo on it. Don't think it's temp. Could be humidity. Could humidity be a problem? It's like 50 to 60 over there. If it's closed and you're, if you're printing PLA, yes. And the door is open, yes. My XL had really bad issues with bed adhesion until I brought it inside. Um, if you're printing PETG and things where the door is shut, no, that's not humidity related. We like the Honey Badger plates from Fabrico. We like the PEX plates from Wham Bam. Um, I do not like the factory bamboo build plates. I, I think that their factory build plates are not great. I much prefer the aftermarket ones. It could be that as well. But yeah, as Robert says, businesses look at investments. We're not looking at throwaway machines. I do say that, yet we standardized on Elegoo for our resin. And we did that because we wanted, instead of having to change out build plates, so we were looking at between Forum Labs and Elegoo and Prusa and all of that. I said, I want, I would need to have a build plate for every type of resin that we have. So we said, well, why don't we just buy a printer for every type of resin that we have? So we went with Elegoo. When the printers die, I give them away with the parts to fix them. That's how we solve it. So, yeah. Business class versus consumer class are very, very different things. Um, and commodities occur within consumer class. They don't normally occur within business class unless that the price option for it is so much better that it makes sense to deal with the potential issues with, um, you know, the machines having issues where they effectively, they effectively need to be disposable for a business to agree to use a consumer grade machine in a business class environment. And then the business better be willing to deal with the, uh, the downfall that can come with that. It is not the easiest thing on the planet. So, yeah, this industry is, is changing. It's not a 
It's not a bad thing. It's also not necessarily a good thing. I like that we are moving and changing and that we are seeing differences in what this community will be. I'm glad to see that uh, companies are not only playing the the profit game, but they're playing the, um, let's go with, uh, what's the best way to say it? Not the profit game, but the economies of scale game. But at the same time, the average consumer doesn't know the difference. And that could pose problems. And it's why, as a content creator in this industry, my goal is to help kind of pull back that shield, that sheath, whatever it might be, from the consumer-grade industry and show that it should and can be way more than what it is and educate the general populace on 3d printing in a meaningful way and if you want to assist in that you can liking subscribing sharing the video with your friends helps these videos reach other people supporting the channel for a couple of bucks a month helps out as well support the creators that you watch it helps us out greatly. But at the same time, if you have video ideas that you want to see come to the channel, the easiest way is to join our Discord and put it all in there. It's the $10 tier and higher. Otherwise, you can email us directly, YouTube at 3dmusketeers.com, and I will do my best to add that into our content schedule. Sometimes they're good ideas. Sometimes they're good ideas that are just not easy for us to implement. But... We believe that the missing component here for 3D printing to become a commodity is high transparency and availability of information, and we want to change that. We want to make sure that there is a high availability of information, and we want 3D Musketeers to be the place that you all, as a community, come to get that information. So, we could use some help with that. And if you want to help, we'd greatly appreciate it. But... I have gone way over on my time. I am almost two hours deep. We've been trying to keep these to an hour and a half. So I'm way over on time, but we had a great talk today. Thank you all for showing up, hanging out with me today. Of course, there is no stream for the podcast next week because of Rocky Mountain Rep Rap. But I'm going to be kicking you guys over to Steve Builds. So hang out as we go over to say hi to Steve Builds. But I do want to thank you all for coming out, liking, commenting, being a part of this whole talk. But that is all I have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And on the 183rd episode of the Making Awesome podcast, keep making awesome. Have a good one.